think it's especially creativity they don't have to approach. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would say no, but it's not something yeah, I feel like I'm score of a tier three student issue perhaps, because I saw your students were doing pretty well with the fossil fuel. My students love it. And I saw in your classes they were really, the master, even the mastery class was. Yeah, they like yeah. to do it because they like to draw and try to figure out what side is what side and what side is what They like to do that type of thing. Yeah. And the other, if I may add, when I look at the composite figure um, data from the, um, I think it's only one problem. It was only one problem. It was only one problem. It's and it was a three-step problem, so they might have done that. It's a com okay, It's so a combination of nine A and eight C. Does that bring in the brainstorming part? Do we concur that the problem was that one problem that was com the SC, the composite figure? As it was a three-step mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. That is more than likely that was the right. That has that it been was, addressed? Right. Yeah. It wasn't that they didn't know the stuff around. They just if you would ask them what the perimeter was, I'm pretty sure that I'm, got I'm it. right. Most of them got that. Right. Right. Got that right. But then they didn't times it by twelve. And I have some, seen some review of that same mm -hmm. essay doing the observations that I did. Okay, now in terms of, uh, well, you're asking them to continue the program. Um, you know, I, I definitely agree, you know, I think that they're, they're able to identify, you know, usually what they're looking for, but then plugging, plugging that number, that variable, whatever they're really searching for back into the problem to really find that final outcome that they're looking for. Um, you know, how much somebody made after a week worth of pay, you know, you know, minus taxes or, you know, just that second step is usually where they're kind of tripping up. If, you know, to think of it in that kind of um, analogy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I'm seeing a lot of the issues in seventh and eighth. So, you know, just seventh right now, it's uh, just really identifying, you know, what's the final outcome? What, you know, what should be, what should our final number look like? You know, is it going to be a thousand, or should it be close to about ten? And just, you know, so that, that fine tuning of the last portion of mm -hmm. the actual problem. That's really. Yeah. I think that's why you have to really start with teaching them how to problem solve. Mm -hmm. You have to get those test taking strategies out there, as well as problem solving. They have to understand, like I said, QP. What is the question asking us, and what is our plan to get to that final answer? And we need to definitely push that with the students. A, B, C, and D, what you know it's not, mark it out, get it out of your head, and move on. You have to make sure you put that into your instruction as you're teaching the, the, the Well, and we've been working on percents uh, this week, and so there are two steps. But that's percent. in your routines, right? In your routines or in the actual lesson? In the actual lesson. The actual yeah, actual lesson. our lessons. Um, and so for the bell work, I'll put a two-step problem up there and just see what they've come up with and usually they'll get the first step which is just figuring out like the sales tax and I'm like but no let's go back to the problem what's the question asking me to do it's asking for the total amount that I'm going to be paying it's not asking just for the sales tax I'm trying to emphasize that and I underline it on the board and so I try to go into it. Mm. I took a poll in my class during um, some of my application problems that I did and we kind of went through the first few problems, and then in the middle of it, I just asked them, I said, I'm going to ask you a question. Before you answer, raise your hand, think about what I'm asking you. And I asked them, I said, when you get a word problem, do, when you read it, do you look at it because you don't know how to do it, or you don't understand what it's asking you? And I asked them to raise their hand if they don't get it, or if they don't understand what it's asking you. And more than half of my class raised their hand, but they don't understand it because they cannot read it. consistent because when I was in your classroom today I'm noticing that it's a very consistent number where 50% of the kids their reconstruction is with rigor it's up there and 50% are getting getting it we have the 10% who's about tier 3 that we need to work with the tutoring and I think we have already a strategy with the tutoring for just those kids so then the big question mark would be and I'm moving to the action step side now is that 30 to 40% of the kids were having that issue with 
better word problem, understanding the word problem, understanding what is being asked, and a test question strategies to, to address that. And I think that that's where we may need to start thinking about what are we going to do in terms of helping those kids. Because I, I think the tutoring ones, even if it's eight here, six there, seven there, those kids are going to get the help that they need. The 50% who are picking up the direct instruction, which is very good, at least my observation, they're going to do well. So we're going to be at around 60 something percentage type of zombie speaks. Now the, the laser needs to be refocused on that 30% bubble kids that are having that issue, the left kid. And we're going to expand our tutoring for those kids as well. We're going to catch on all of the left kids in tutoring with salary schools moving forward. Now, one of my one of my kids actually surprised me that was a question on sales, and the question was like it was a CD player, and the CD player was fifteen percent off, and I wanted to know how much he saved, but he actually gave me what the used parts was. And was yeah, I was happy for him because he did like what the second step would be instead of just the first. Step. Right? I mean, I have you know you get those moments. Okay. I've noticed during the last, from the last meeting that we had, which was data analysis to this one, I've noticed how you guys were very effective in taking what we talked about in the meeting and focusing on the uh, what kids, what kids need the help. Have we seen any like hard data on, on the ones that are getting it now? If we look back, we noticed that there was only like an 80 percent, 60 percent of the kids average passing 7.8 C, 7.9 A. Have we seen the needle move? Too early to tell. What's your feeling though? Do you feel like there, there were some kids who were on the fence or beginning to get it now because of the additional instruction all the time, which was an issue the last time that we spoke? I think so because um, there's a lot of kids that I have that come to me. Um, I call parents and I have a lot of parents. There's some that I did not identify, but I realized some kids that I did not identify. It's not funny, but sometimes you don't realize the kids that can't read. You call them to be in class and they have you taking them from class to class. And then you realize, oh, And when you say they can't read, is this mm -hmm. an English issue yes. for the left students? Or yes. do you mean it's some are regular. So it's about regular as well. Some so are so he hasn't get it. I'm speaking specifically to more of um, my left students. Some of them can't read. And I realize if even through tutoring that most of the tutoring what they know and what they don't know. A lot of the kids I have they can't round. And I've just become aware of that this week. They can't round. Um, they cannot divide. They don't know um, place value still. So there's a lot of underlying things that really need to be focused on. Um, one, I guess, um, thing that's worked for me this week, and we do this every year. At some point, we, like when we do STAR, we bring out calculators because you want the students to understand the process. And today has been a real smooth day. We've been working on, my weeks are sweet, so we've been working on unit rates um, and setting up proportions. I did some of the figures last week. So it's like they kind of know proportions, they know how to set it up. So it's been going smoothly. But for those kids that used to sit and say, they're lost after trying to buy at 5 and 15, they're actually, okay, I got it. And they know the process. They just couldn't get the process. But they understand that this is what I need to do. So we've got to be one step further and work on those um, foundational skills. So, in order to address that, because I think that's a, the same problem across the board as an action step, would you all agree and suggest that maybe taking that those first five minutes of the lesson could be strictly foundation? And I'm, I'm sure some of you do it every now and then. Can we make it an everyday thing where we focus on one foundation skill? Like if rounding is a big issue, maybe you five minute pair work perhaps when you have the kids who do another way, work with the other kids, and you can monitor, do some one on one, specifically targeting that. 30-ish to 40-ish percent of the kids are kind of like borderline. Because the, the tier three, we can take care of doing tutoring. But how can we 